a very beautiful morning today. I feel like <laughs> I'm somewhere in a different planet. <laughs> I think you all have <laughs> kept me in some pedestal. I'm just one among you. <laughs> just that. <laughs> I don't think uh, I deserve such a big uh, um, uh, hyped up uh, introduction. Anyway, thank you so much um, for the kind invitation, uh, respected Vice Principal, Dr. Sheba, and the rest of the dignitaries here. Um, uh, in fact, um, I love being with uh, college students because I feel like a student myself and I feel like I'm getting back my youth. Um, it so happens that I have two professions now. One is my gynecology and the other one is become, being a chief guest everywhere in Trichy. <laughs> so it's like... Uh, I'm there all over, everywhere, I think. Um, but uh, Women's Day is something very, very special to me. Not only to me, to all of you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the person who um, gave an overview about my family. Um, I was overwhelmed. <laughs> Um, but Shanta Gopalan, doctor, was my mother-in-law and um, I'm always proud of her achievements. Uh, like she said, she was the only gynecologist um, uh, for over 50 villages. She still continues to work at the age of 76. She's still running a hospital um, and I'm just a visiting consultant. Uh, so somebody did a beautiful homework there. That was a big surprise for me. Thank you so much. Uh, my mother-in-law will be really, really pleased to hear that. So, um, yeah. Um, sadhana. Um, uh, I'm very, very happy that there is a women's wing called Sadhana here in Bishop Heber. But I will be happier if the day comes when there's no requirement for something like this. Do you all agree with me? Should we really need a women's wing? Yes or no? Can we have some noise from the audience? Hello. So, <laughs> I think, um, why are we all here today for International Women's Day? Uh, the theme is um, basically gender equality, right? What comes to my mind immediately is when I was a kid, my grandmother, you know what she used to do? Um, I had two brothers and I was the third child and the only daughter in the family. Uh, when my brothers used to come back from school and college, you know, there was, uh, she used to cook for all of us, but then a sizable proportion used to be, she used to keep a sizable proportion for my brother. And for me, like, you're a girl, you need to adjust. You need to adjust. Uh, he's a boy, so he deserves a little more. Is that true? <laughs> That's when I started thinking, like, how am I inferior to my brother in any way? Um, so where does this gender inequality start? Does it not start with women? Don't you think it's starting right from home with the women of your house? Is it not true? How many people experience this even today? The girls being fed little lesser quantity, lesser in nutrition compared to boys. Is it happening at all? You can just raise your hands if it's happening. And I don't think anybody will judge you for that. Um, yeah, there are a few hands, yes. Yes. So, and who is doing it? It's not your dad, I'm sure. It's your mother or your grandmother, correct? It's your mother or your grandmother? So, it's actually, I, I must say, this is unfortunately a very patriarchal society where the male is considered dominant. And, uh, you know, the female always gets the back seat. 
and our women are actually conditioned over the years because of a lot of cultural, economic, social uh, situations that they have gone through. They are actually conditioned to treat females differently compared to males. In fact, it is a woman. In my regular clinical practice, you will be surprised if I say, I had this patient, I just like to say a few anecdotes. I had this patient who came to me um, with the first pregnancy. Uh, she belonged to a forward community and um, uh, at the fifth or sixth month she wanted to know what baby it is. I said it's, it's criminal to reveal the sex of the baby now and so we cannot do it. So she underwent the delivery. Uh, incidentally, she had a severe, severe heart problem. She had a heart block. Her pulse rate used to be only 40. You know, even to live your day-to-day -day life, the normal pulse rate is 60 or 72. And she, her, she had a heart block. She, ha she was just barely living. And she went through this pregnancy. Uh, with a lot of uh, care, we gave her a decent baby, uh, without, we pulled her out of any complications, we kept her in the ICU. And then she went back, after two years she came back with the second baby. Again she asked me at fourth month, um, what baby it is, I said, the, whole, the law still holds tight, we are not supposed to reveal it. And for the second pregnancy, she was kind of psyched up. She was all the time thinking, it must be a boy, oh my god, it must be a boy, it must be a boy. So I, I called her family and I asked every individual person, see look you have, your wife is a heart patient, she's got a heart rate of 40, she's barely living and now she's a mother of a child and you, she's going through a second pregnancy. Are you guys in any way pushing her to have a boy? Is, is, is it happening in the family? Who is like, she, why is she getting psyched up? Why is she doing this? Then the husband said, none of us are actually pushing her. It's her own thinking that she must have a boy. It is a varisu for her husband. She wants to gift her husband a varisu. And that's why she is like, it's her own thinking. Her, her mother-in-law was very sweet. Her husband was very sweet. Her Natanar was very sweet. And they all wanted good to happen to her. We, in fact, they were against her uh, getting pregnant for the second time. So this was an again tumultuous second pregnancy that she underwent. Again, we took all the precautions, kept her in the ICU. She had a cesarean section and we sent the baby and the mother home. Three years later, she comes back. Again, four months pregnant after two cesarean sections, even more riskier. At the fourth month or fifth month, when it's not good to have a termination at that late, and she comes back and says, with the same, says the same thing, Doctor, I'm so psyched up. I can't live this life without having a boy. And we had to do a complete counseling. And now you're pregnant, you're already five months, and it's not good to terminate. So it's better to go through this pregnancy. Please have a sterilization of something done. And then she disappeared. And then I heard from her relative that she eventually aborted that child, knowing from somewhere that it's a girl baby. She risked her own life for that because she was a heart patient. And, and bang, she comes for the fourth pregnancy again to me. She said, last time I took so much risk because um, I, being a heart patient, uh, I wanted a boy desperately. So this time again she comes back with a pregnancy. This was a fourth pregnancy. So who is driving her? She's a woman. She's driving it for herself. Unfortunately, our women have got conditioned to thinking that men are a cut above the women. And I think the change has to start from where? From you all. You are all going to be tomorrow's mothers. You are all going to be teaching your children. You are all going to be raising the next generation for the country. And I think the change has to start from the women. I'm sure Vice Principal will agree with me. Men are not driving this at all. <laughs> That's the sad thing. There are instances where men take the upper hand. For instance, like 
Um, I am a part of um, a national movement called Dhira. Dhira means courage. Say no to violence against women. And we have been working um, with college and school students to educate how to protect themselves, how to manage uh, whenever there is violence against women. And we did some studies. Uh, surprisingly, we found that eight, 60 to 80 percent of women have undergone at least one episode of violence from a male partner in their lifetime. 60 to 80 percent. So why is this happening? We went in and studied the psychology of these women. Why is it happening? First of all, they are not educated equally. Second of all, they are not, we tried to counsel some of them, um, like they were perpetually getting beaten up by the husbands for some reasons. Um, they were perpetually getting, uh, you know, like um, uh, violence was happening at home. They were getting beaten up, uh, they were getting ill-treated uh, for so many reasons. So why not leave that husband and come away? Uh, these women actually, they, were, they told us they are helpless. Why they are helpless? Because they are not financially independent. They are not had prop, uh, equal education. They are not earning members of the house. Um, they are dependent on their husbands for every single thing. So that's where the dependence comes and that's being taken advantage of by the husbands. So you got my point. So the, the way forward is educating our women. First of all, the change has to start from women in the house. Uh, small things, like I said, uh, equality in food, equality in everything. So uh, these women have to start feeling that they are equal and men have to respect the dignity of these women. And education, empowerment, financial independence. I think that plays a very, very important role. Um, are there any finance students or economic students here? Are there any economics or finance students here? I think it's a very important part to become financially independent, to think independently, um, uh, you know, to take decisions. And uh, my um, simple take home message for today will be like, you guys have to be, um, you have to gear up for um, not only education, work, finance, taking care of your finances, taking care of decision making in everything at home. Um, it's always, uh, ha what is happening is the woman earns, but she gives everything to the husband. So that's what happens. And at the end of the day, the husband ill-treats her, and then she's at the mercy of the husband. So this is what is happening. So it's very important to be financially independent. It's no rocket science. It's simple. Just keep your money, keep invested, keep it to yourself, and try to manage finances. Uh, take part in the decision making of everything in your family. And uh, that's a way forward to gender equality, I guess. Um, we spoke so much about profession, passion. Um, yeah, um, I, I was when I was a kid, I wanted to learn Bharatanatyam, and my parents were from a very modest uh, middle class family. They said they can't afford, and my mom was not supportive enough. So it's like I've been having that yearning all my years. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not a dancer. Um, so until I heard once Shiva Shankari talk in a meeting. Namaku or Vishyam Pudusurka, Nama Idavaha Aganum Abdin and Nanachomna. If that fire is there, by now you would have already become one. That's when it struck me hard. Like, if I really wanted to be a dancer, my fire in the belly would have taken me to the correct path. I would have 
despite all odds i should have i should have done something and become a dancer somehow so probably that fire was not enough in me to get me going so I, that was the day i stopped complaining about my parents so i think your life is a game of cards you have your life will depend on what card you choose how you play the cards how you move the next card and it's completely your life that you have to take charge and be in the making so um how many of you um have some goals like what do you see yourself uh, uh, as after 3 or 4 years can i just have some interaction um are you all okay to interact with me quickly you want to be are you all here first of all because your parents pushed you into this or you wanted to do this can you raise your hands how many of you are here because your parents have pushed you into this all of you are here because you love this seriously okay um unfortunately today's youth when i studied back home like many years ago there were only three three or four streams of um, career one was medical one was engineering one was uh, commerce and uh, maybe there were lawyers there were a few other uh, things happening but today everything is in plenty you have a we are dealing with a situation where everything is in plenty and uh, and the problem is one of choice i think and the problem with the parents is they have their dreams for their children and they want to take the children in the beaten track um which is where actually my son is uh, graduated recently from iit bombay and uh, he's been in germany for post graduation and he's come back he's come back to india and he did a small survey about around uh, uh, with his friends all of them from iits um, about 50 people all of them into are into very high paying jobs very high positions but how many of them are happy he's saying only one or two are happy i am into this uh, job because my parents pushed me into this because i have this this huge thing about parental pressure is one and the huge thing about societal pressure society you need to make a mark in the society you want to do because you are worried that your neighbor can mistake you for something else you are worried you want to make a standing in the society and in the bargain you actually lose yourself you actually lose yourself your heart is somewhere but you're doing something for somebody else as the vice principal rightly said it's very important to hold up your originality your uniqueness today's youth actually are very creative very innovative um they are they have plenty of ideas um i always keep telling there was a time when i used to teach my children and now i'm learning so much from my children today's youth they have they have totally different perspectives they have totally different ideas and um it's like um it's like you just need to let them bloom let them flower um they have everything except one thing that is the freedom to do what they want um i was just talking to one of my uh, doctor friends um no we were discussing like we are very liberal parents we allow our children to go everywhere do whatever they want and you know we gave them a lot of freedom and to my surprise um, um this boy actually told her ma- told her his mother mommy uh, i differ with you uh, the freedom is mine who are you to give it so that something then it struck us hard like everybody has their freedom to do what they want and we are nobody to take their freedom so actually your life i would suggest is uh, again a game of cards that you play 
and if you have a passion for something follow your heart and that is you can't be doing something uh, for the sake of your parents or for the sake of your uh, neighbors or for the societal pressure what you don't like so happiness lies in what you do what you would want to do and what you would want to be in future and the se the next thing is uh, we as women we, ha we we are so busy caring for others we are all the time multitasking um, a woman actually cooks her, nowadays everybody is working she cooks food she packs food for her husband uh, packs food for the children sends them to school college and uh, then she goes to the office she comes back she does everything for the family she's the main caretaker of the family in the process she forgets herself she really forgets herself do men do that no they are happy doing what they want but only women are not giving themselves their me time i always insist on this thing called me time you need to explore yourself you need to tap your own potentials you need to live that second life what you always yearned for or you always yearned for and you need to make time for that and fitness is another big thing nowadays like we are coming across lots of diseases high bp sugar um what not at the age of 30s 30s and 40s so and now obesity is again a very very uh, significant uh, epidemic that's coming up childhood obesity especially and uh, whenever um, and now this uh, thing called pcos uh, i'm sure you would have heard about nirkati problem pcos irregular periods this thing that is very common in today's young uh, women and girls and obesity is again a very important issue whenever the mother brings the child an obese child and says she eats so much she doesn't do any work at home she's all the time sitting with the gadgets playing uh, she's all the time like uh, whatever i say she doesn't listen uh, she needs to uh, just yesterday i had a patient with um, uh, she was just 16 years she was weighing 90 kilos at 16 if she is going to weigh 90 kilos it's it's going to be very unhealthy so the mother is so concerned uh, she comes and say tells me like so i just asked her okay it's not easy to lose weight um, it's not easy just preaching for somebody do you do your workouts every day what workout do you do do you go to the gym and she said like why do i need to go because i just told her you are the person the child will emulate if i go to the gym my child will see look at me okay this is a part of life everyday life and my child will grow with the thinking that it's a normal thing to go to the gym normal thing to do exercise normal thing to have a good diet healthy lifestyle and all the mothers keep just blaming the child so i just tell for a change why don't you go with the child to the gym so that's where you make the difference you make the you make the child think that it is normal to have to go to the gym to work out and um, you know maintain a healthy lifestyle then the child automatically gets it into her daily routine so that's what is happening so as girls today you are the youth you will become mothers you are the ones whom your children will emulate and you have to be that example that you missed out in your parents or in your previous generation i think i won't take much time today being um international women's day um happy women's day to all and i think if i make a small difference somewhere uh in any one of you my day is done so uh, i thank you for the opportunity um i wish you all a great future 
I think uh, there is a spark in everybody that needs to be ignited and don't wait for other people to ignite your spark. You have to be self-igniting because you know where to tap your potential. Have a goal, work towards your goal um, and uh, have a me time always for yourself. Don't do things just what your parents are pushing you into or every day change is the only thing that is constant in life. And every day discover, rediscover yourself and uh, I think the key to happiness is finding that inside love and contentment for doing something you love. And that will make you a wholesome person in the future and your uh, women are the pivot of every family. They are the first teacher for the child, they, are the, they make up the society and and if you make the change, if you start making the change, I think we have a much brighter future. So I'm just waiting for a day when we know we won't need this women's wing anywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.